In this video, I'll be discussing the Kibi Soft Classic, the body type image identity, the style profile, and at the end, I'll be sharing a wardrobe for this type. Hi, I'm Non from My Authentic Style, and this channel is dedicated to helping you find your authentic style. This video assumes that you've taken the Kibi body types test and you've determined your type to be soft classic. If you haven't, you can go to the video where I take you through the test as well as the one where I take you through the answers. Otherwise, for the soft classic, your answers should look something like this. Mostly C with some D and E answers. So meaning mostly balanced with some softness added to that balance. On the yin and yang scale, the soft classic is balanced with a yin influence, meaning balanced with additional softness. And now let's discuss the Kibi soft classic. This type is characterized by Kibi as graceful lady. Before we get into the specifics, it's important to note and remember that every soft classic woman will look slightly different. It's the presence of balanced yin and yang and an overall moderate and symmetrical appearance with an additional yin undercurrent that makes the soft classic. On different women, this will play out differently as I hope to showcase. Now let's discuss the body type. Height, moderate, up to five foot six inches. Body type, slightly rounded, tends to slight fleshiness, soft arms, thighs, and waistline, evenly proportioned bust, waist, and hips, possibility of being slightly short-waisted, arms and legs tend to be moderately short in proportion to height, bone structure, symmetrical with soft or slightly rounded edges, straight and slightly delicate, maybe small and slightly wide, but with soft edges, not square. Shoulders are tapered or slightly sloped. Facial contours are slightly small and wide, as seen in the nose, cheekbones, and jawline. Hands and feet tend to be moderate or small and slightly wide. These women are either verified or suspected to be soft classic by David Kibbe and they help to illustrate some of these attributes. So firstly, I see in all of them this sense of balance. There is that proportionality to them. They are neither too curvy or too straight, too sharp or too angular or too rounded or too soft. There is that blendedness. But I do also see that additional softness. Kristen Dunst has that softness and I think it comes across most evidently in her face. She has that additional flesh. It's very soft. It's very youthful. And her body is pretty well proportioned. There is that roundedness to her bone structure and her edges, but that additional softness for me at least comes across mostly in her face. For Lupita, she also has that great proportionality and for her, the additional softness I see is in her figure. She has more of that rounded, soft, lush figure as compared to these other women. It's not overly lush or overly soft, but it's just slightly more than being perfectly balanced. So that's her additional yin. And in the case of Marianne Courtyard, I don't see it so much in her frame. She is very balanced in that way and even falls towards the petite side, but I do get it as an essence from her. So in her face, she just carries that sense of femininity. So very interesting how it plays out differently in all of them. Facial features, soft and full, slightly fleshy, large eyes, soft cheeks, full lips, symmetrical and evenly spaced. Coloring. Any coloring is possible, warm or cool, but soft classics usually tend towards blended or low contrast coloring with a delicate skin tone. Occasionally a soft classic will have high contrast coloring, but it still tends towards an overall subtlety as opposed to sharpness. Here as usual, I will make the note that 
I think it's most accurate to simply say that any coloring is possible, especially as we take David Kibbe's text and we expand it to include more races, ethnicities, and just in general, a broader spectrum of peoples. Those notes may work, but they also may not. So if it applies to you, then keep it. But if it doesn't, I don't think it's make or break. As well as for hair, any texture is possible. David Kibbe notes that it usually tends to be slightly wispy if straight. Again, that may apply to you. If it does, take it. If it doesn't, I would keep it simply at any texture is possible. If overweight, body becomes very soft. Facial features become very fleshy. A thickish look is usually the result of excess weight. The waist is the first to lose any definition. So to discuss the effects of weight on this type, we're going to look at firstly Lupita Nyong'o. Here we have her at what I think is her leanest that I've seen. At this low weight, I think she she looks great, of course, but she doesn't look her best. I believe her to be a soft classic, and that means that she is best suited by a little bit of additional softness and when she loses this much weight, she strips herself off that softness. And so she just looks a little bit out of harmony. I think she looks great, but she doesn't look her best. At this ultra low weight, she still has that softness in her leg area. I think that's where she first gains weight and probably the last place she will lose it. But you can see up top just how defined her arms are and her bone structure is very much front and center and she looks very slim but it's a slimness that at least for me she just doesn't look her most liveliest I think something is taken away from her when she loses this much weight comparing her in this middle section where she's gained a little bit of weight as compared to those first two images I think in the middle she looks her best she just comes to life. That additional bit of weight, it does go to her legs. As I've said, I think she gains her weight from the midsection down. So you can see that there's a widening and a thickening there, but her upper half remains relatively taut and very slim. You can still see her bone structure. She looks very streamlined, very strong, but her shaping becomes a little bit curvier because of that thickening of her bottom half. But overall, I can see a little bit more fullness in her cheeks and her skin just looks better, more plumpier. She looks lively, she looks fuller, she looks more like herself and she really comes to life. And then in these last two images, she's gained a little bit more weight from that middle section. And you can see that all it does is create more softness, especially in that bottom half again. So now her figure still remains feminine and tending towards hourglassy but it's there's a thickening in her waist and there's just more plushness and softness and her middle half most distinctly is not as streamlined as it's been in both these other sections so she gains that additional flesh you can see it in her face as well in all of them she looks great but as she gains weight she becomes more fleshy more softer and fuller but in all the sections, again, she's maintained pretty much the same shaping. It's always had that tending to an hourglass figure, just more or less plush as she has lost or gained weight. And then notably, her upper section, you can see how much her bone structure becomes defined or less so as she loses and gains weight. Another soft classic who gains weight slightly differently is Kirsten Dunst. So here we have her at, in the very first image, I would say her lowest weight possibly. She was very young. I forget what movie this is from, but you can see that she has that softness. She is at a very low rate, but she doesn't look bone dry or stick skinny, if that makes sense. There's always that softness and that flesh and she has that beautiful shaping, her waist is defined, but the key thing is that she has that flesh to her. Again, in that black swimsuit, this is now much later on in her life and she's still very slim, but she's gained a little bit of weight from that first image. And again, you can see that softness. I can still see the slight waist definition, but there's just a softness to her flesh 
at whatever weight that she's in and that roundedness of her edges. There's no sharpness to her. It's really difficult to find images of Kirsten Dunst at a higher weight because she's managed to really not fluctuate too much in all the decades that she's been in the spotlight, I feel. But I did find images of her when she was pregnant, which is when most people gain weight. And it's interesting because even in all of these, she really didn't gain much weight. She essentially gained the belly and remained pretty much in the same structure. What I see, though, is that she maintained that general softness to her without really fluctuating much. So I still see the rounded edges, the soft flesh, and the plushness to her just without any any real additional weight gain. This is her, I think, about six months postpartum. And you can see that, again, she pretty much remained the same. There's a little bit of additional plushness, but that we can attribute to her having had a baby. So some softness in the bust, perhaps. But her overall looks pretty much the same. And for some people, weight gain is not going to be really a thing to point to because they won't have too many fluctuations. So I think that's interesting. A soft classic will not be tall, have large or angular bone structure, have a boyish or muscular body type, have a true hourglass figure with a waspish waist, be extremely petite or small boned with extra delicate hands and feet. A soft classic will not have exotic or prominent facial characteristics. So remember that the key component of this type is being blended and symmetrical. Yes, they have additional softness, additional sensuality, because all of that forms that essence of yin. But their key characteristic is that they are overall blended and symmetrical. So when these quote unquote exotic features come to the forefront, this is normally an indication of a different type. Sophia Loren, Adele and Tyra Banks are all soft dramatics. They are a blend of the dramatic and the romantic. So they have a high level of yin to them, but it's dramatized. It has that bigness and that theatrical aspect to it. So it really comes to the forefront. And I think their facial features showcase this. And then to the left, we have Michaela Cole, who has such a striking bone structure and just facial composition. And I use this image because I'm not sure of her type, but there's something very prominent and flamboyant and dramatic about it. And it's really in your face. It's very bold. This is not what a soft classic would look like. Theirs is much more soft and blended. There's a delicacy to it and a, and a blendedness to it. And so when we look at the women we've been talking about, they are beautiful and symmetrical, but there's nothing you look at them and say, oh yes, that stands out. Think of Lupita Nyong'o or Kirsten Dunst, beautiful faces, but nothing like in these women where it would be easy to draw a caricature of their faces. That's sort of not the case with the classic type, if that helps. Although again, these characteristics will always look different in different people and anomalies are all over the place. But as just a means of understanding, this is what would be considered far from the soft classic facial composition. Here are some soft classic celebrities. Going from left to right, there's Kirsten Dunst and Lupita Nyong'o. Those two are suspected but unverified. And then Marion Cotillard, Meryl Streep, Jessica Chestain, and Carolina Herrera are verified by Kibbe. And here is a list of soft classic celebrities. And now let's discuss Kibbe soft classic lines. Shape. Soft curved shapes with rounded edges. Smooth symmetrical shapes that flow gently. Think of circles, ovals, and subdued swirls. 
here in these gowns, I see all of these things at play. Looking at the silhouettes, I see that gentle draping that gives a softness also because of the fabric in both the dresses by Kirsten Dunst and Jessica Chastain. And I see those ovals in the bodice and those soft swirls. Likewise, in Lupita's case, I see that peplum that creates that little bit of roundedness and the fabric is not stiff. It's gently, it's structured by gently sew with that little bit of softness and they all just look great. Avoid irregular shapes. So this dress on Jessica is not flattering. It looks inelegant on her. And a key part of that is the shape of the dress. Not only is that edging around her neckline very sharp and irregular, but the skirt of the dress is very rigid. It's almost like it was molded to resemble the flow of a skirt, but it's too structured. The overall shape of it creates a silhouette that just doesn't harmonize with her and does nothing for her. So you want to avoid that sort of strange shaping. Avoid unconstructed or extremely boxy shapes. Here again, the first look on Marion is very unconstructed. That white dress or shirt has zero structure to it. It's very large and shapeless on her and she's lost underneath it. This is an outfit that swallows her up and would be better served for somebody with a more prominent structure whose structure would then carry the shapeless gown and bring it to life. And on her, it simply doesn't work. To the right, Jessica is wearing that very boxy suit and it completely loses her shape. The fabric is also too stiff for her so that the overall look is very inelegant on her. It doesn't shape her right. It doesn't move with her. It's just very bland and not flattering. Avoid simple symmetrical shapes with sharp edges. And here we have both of these women in these very simple gowns, but focus on how the edges are sharp. In Lupita's case, it has a very high neck as well as those very sharp shoulders. And it just acts as a sort of cage for her and not in a way that brings her to life. The fabric itself is a little bit soft, it's velvety. So it could have worked if the other elements of the dress weren't so restrictive and if there was an openness to the neckline. As it stands, this is something much more suited to a dramatic type. And on her, it just feels a little bit too rigid. And in Jessica's case, this dress is too simple. There's not really anything to talk about, which strips it of a particular elegance. The fabric choice, it is a little bit too structured and rigid. It just sits on her, so it doesn't give her any kind of shaping. And it has that sharpness of the V, which again, not too bad, but everything together just creates an overall dull look that doesn't do anything for her. Line and silhouette. Smooth, soft, symmetrical silhouette with slight shaping. Gently flowing lines that flare or swirl. Clean lines that are unbroken. Smooth horizontal or diagonal draping. So here, look at all that softness, all that swirling and all of that draping. These women look amazing in all of these. I see that soft draping in Meryl's neckline and how the skirt swoops in that tulip kind of design and she looks immaculate. Lupita has that fabric that flows gently and drapes and there's that symmetry and all that detailing, but it's not too much and the additional softness comes in with the fabric choice itself so when she moves it moves with her and it just has that sense of frugality and elegance and for jessica there is that draping that gives her a beautiful shape and then how that fabric cascades to her side gives it that little bit of asymmetry but it's very gentle very rounded and she looks immaculate Avoid hard edge geometric silhouettes. So this is too rigid, too structured. It looks as though this outfit could have been drawn with a ruler because of how all the edges are so sharp and how the fabric is so heavy that it maintains that sharp shape. This is too 
geometric for Lupita. She requires something a little bit softer. The same outfit could have worked potentially in a softer fabric that had a little bit of give and a little bit of movement with her, but as is, it just feels too structured for her. Avoid overly ornate or intricate lines. So this almost has the opposite problem. It's too lacking in structure. There's a delicacy to it that doesn't hold up to her structure because the blendedness of the soft classic means that they do have that yang element to them. They do have a sense of structure, but also the softness. So both need to be present. And here there's none of the yang. So she looks off and it just doesn't work on her. And it really looks inelegant. Avoid wide unconstructed silhouettes. Here we see that complete lack of structure and added to that is the widening of the silhouette. In Marriott's case, that skirt opens up at the waist and it has that high-low hemline and the fabric choice is also just not really working for her. But the shape overall, the silhouette of this is so strange on her. It doesn't give her any shaping and it's too funky for this type so it looks very childish and very off on her it looks like she was trying to be cool and it doesn't work something a lot more simple and tailored and gentle on her would have been much better on kirsten dunst this is an interesting look but that white is it a dress on top of everything else that she's wearing really lacks a structure. It's too ornate and flowy. It looks haphazard on her. There's almost too many things going on. It's an interesting look. I think color-wise, there's a completeness to this that I do like, but the fabric itself just feels very strange on everything else. I wish it gave her a better shape. It sort of billows in the middle and widens her silhouette and it doesn't really flatter her at all. I would like to see that outfit without that white thing on top of it because I think it might have just been simple and elegant on her. And for Lupita, this tropical green jumpsuit, I believe, is very unconstructed. It has no structure at all. So it just feels like it's falling off of her and again, not flattering her. For all of them, the key complaint is that there isn't enough of that yang to provide them with the structure that they do need. This is all yin and so it just feels very unbalanced on them. Avoid sharp, severely straight lines. So here we have the opposite problem. This is too yang and it completely misses on the yin that is required for them to have that sense of balance. And in fact, as soft classic, they require additional yin to make them complete. So this is too rigid, too structured, and it just feels very boxy and not flattering and very constricting on both of them. Likewise, avoid straight lines without flow or shaping. This very rigid, structured sort of silhouette is devoid of any flow, any shaping, because again, it's completely without the yin aspect. And they just, like I said, look very restricted and constricted in them. Avoid overly crisp and fitted silhouettes with staccato lines. So this is interesting because the staccato element is something that looks quite wonderful on gamine types and not so much on the classic type. It has that very broken up sort of line. So in Lupita's case, you see that there's the white of her shirt collar and then there's that white of her sleeves and then there's that gray of her shoe and then there's a purple and all of these things are very broken up. There's not one cohesive line. And that sort of breaking up typically doesn't work for classic types. I do, however, really like this look on her. I wouldn't say it's her best go-to, sure, but I do think she looks great. And the reason is I think Lupita has a gamine essence. And so she can pull off things 
that lean very gamin and look very fun. On her, this looks very edgy. It doesn't look completely off. It's it's just a very interesting look and she does that really, really well. So she has a range to play with in terms of styling. I think when we look at Jessica, we see how somebody who doesn't have a gamin essence, I think she leans very much more romantic and even classic in her essences. So for her, if she were to wear, for example, the look that Lapita has, it would look very busy, which is what we would typically expect for it to do on a classic type. But Lapita, because of her essence allowance, is able to pull it off. On Jessica, the look that she has looks, it's not too intense in terms of staccato, so it's not awful, but it does look a little bit ornate and busy on her. So that broken up, black here, black there, just a little bit too cutesy not something that I would necessarily go for with her and the rigidity of the fabric of her pants also not great on her so very interesting and I, I think if we're just looking strictly at soft classics I would say most of the time they would look as they do on Jessica not on Lupita so it's an interesting thing to discuss because now their essences come into play but typically soft classics should avoid overly crisp and fitted silhouettes with staccato lines. Fabrics. Fabrics should be those of light to moderate weight that will drape softly and flow easily without being clingy. The finish should be slight matte or slight sheen with a soft and plush surface. Textures should be very light and soft. Fabrics that have a high quality or important look are excellent. Knits and wovens should be supple, light and drapeable without being clingy. So simply put, high quality fabrics are what this type goes for because that is the classic ideal. And then added to that for the soft classic is that sense of drapeability and softness that allows for that movement. Avoid heavy, stiff fabrics. So here again, you see how that weight in the fabric creates a sharp angularity to these garments. In that first look, that suit that Jessica has on is very constructed, very rigid on her and that sort of rigidity really doesn't work well with the softness of her type and likewise in Lupita's case it's not horrible because the fabric does create a little bit of that circular draping at the bottom but overall I would like to see her in something slightly softer and this weight of fabric just isn't the best choice for these women. Avoid rough thick textures so here you see Marianne has this very rough denim dress on and it's just incredibly separate from her. I see the dress and then I see her. It's very inelegant on her. It's too rough for her and she looks very delicate compared to it in a way that separates them and juxtaposes against her. Likewise, this purple dress Jessica Chastain has on is very rough feeling. The texture is too rough and it has that lack of polish and elegance to it. It's also very shiny, which is not the best. At least this kind of shiny is not the best for this type. It again lacks that sophistication that they need. So avoid these sorts of fabrics. You also want to avoid bulky knits. And looking at Lupita and Yongo in the middle, we can see that two piece that has that very textured fabric to it it almost reminds me of a chanel-esque type of fabric which which is too textured for her it feels too bulky on her i want something smoother than that on her this is just not polished enough for her again avoid overly sheer fabrics so i find these very interesting because they suit her differently, right? They're both very sheer outfits, but the first one I would say is just to be avoided completely. It doesn't suit her and it looks incredibly inelegant on her. This type has that requirement for class and sophistication. So showing too much skin is always going to work against that 
and is just not going to harmonize well with them. And in this first one, there's other things that also just don't work. The fabric is sheer, yes, and that's the biggest knock on it, but it's also very stiff on her, so it's restrictive and it doesn't have enough movement and flow to really harmonize with the soft aspect of her soft classic body type. And then it's also very simple and basic and there's just really nothing to look at. It's incredibly boring on her. So not only is the fabric too sheer and lacking that class and sophistication, but it's just, there's nothing really to look at and I don't like that look at all. The second look is also sheer, but I, Personally, I actually like it on her. I think it's very daring. So, and in a way that pays off. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that this style of dress be what Lapita leans on or structures her wardrobe around. I do think that in general, soft classics have that requirement for polish, elegance, class, etc., etc. So like I said, more demure, more covered up, more traditional sort of styling would suit them better. However, if she is going to go for a more daring look and something sheer, this would be the way to do it. I love how this comes together on her. And as a sort of thing that she does once in a while, it's very effective. It's very eye-catching and ultimately beautiful. What I like about this is the choice of color really helps to give it a subtlety and it's very sheer but somehow elegant and I think it's such a very difficult thing to get correct and I think she did it well here. Also a lot of other things work to make this work on her. For example, she doesn't have a very big bust so because of that it gives it a less overly sensual feel. If she did have a bigger bust, then this would start to veer more into the very sexy category where it will start to separate from her and her essence and what is required off of her. But because of her build, it really, it's definitely sexy. I mean, but it's not, it's not overly so. And the color really does so beautifully with her that it melts into her skin very beautifully and in so doing sort of takes the edge off that nakedness of the dress if that makes sense and the styling is elegant it's soft the fabric it has that flow to it there's that symmetry and it just it, it works for her so again in general Yes, avoid overly sheer fabrics, but if you are playing with fashion and you're doing it in a way that you understand how to balance out your body type and your essences, every rule really can be broken. Avoid extremely shiny fabrics. So here you can see just how these very sparkly fabrics come off on these women. To me, they look like costumes and they're very separate from them. and. It just doesn't harmonize with them. It's too in your face and it takes away that, again, sophistication and polish. So you want to stay away from this. And I think Lupita's dress, the gold one, is worse off because not only is it shiny, but it's also textured. So it feels rough and there's just too much going on. It's over the top and it really detracts from her. Avoid extremely dull finished fabrics. So here... The stress is otherwise okay. It's a little bit very subdued and very simple, but in a way that a classic could pull off. And it has that little bit of softness. So the shoulders are rounded. There's that fabric in the center that does that gentle draping. There's a peplum that also gives shaping. So it does a lot of things right, but the fabric itself is just so dull that it makes the look ultimately very boring on her and I know we just said avoid extremely shiny fabrics and yes you should but also this is extremely dull so a little bit of sheen or a little bit of something interesting to the fabric does well for this type because it plays into that femininity of theirs this is too dull and leans too yang 
just in terms of fabric choice. Details. Details should be smooth and symmetrical, composed of rounded shapes with slightly intricate edges. The details should provide that extra touch of yin or femininity, so it's meant to soften and feminize the look. In this way, it should be added as just a touch or an afterthought to add that little bit of a romantic streak. Be careful not to overdo it. Slight definition through the shoulders, clean, soft necklines, draped necklines, tapered sleeves and a defined waist, subdued trim is also possible. So here in these three looks, I see this at play in various ways. With Kirsten Dunst, I see that soft neckline, that very slight draping. There's no sharpness or any sharp edging anywhere on this dress, but that neckline is very softened and that suits her well. The fabric itself has that bit of a sheen to it and the silhouette has that little bit of draping to it, but still somewhat streamlined. And there's that trim on the skirt that's very delicate sort of embroidery, but not overdone, just a touch of it. And again, that adds that little bit of femininity to the dress. And I think that look is stunning on her. In Marion's case, she has that little bit of draping around her waist and there's that tulip again draping to the bottom of her dress and there's that beading, but it's not excessive, it's just feminine. A touch of it gives that sense of glamour to the look and I think it works well for her. And of course, Kirsten Dunst again in this combo, this polka dot and white skirt, the skirt has that little bit of movement so not too sharp, a little bit of draping at the bottom, and there's some gathers where her shirt ends, and that sharp V of her neckline is softened by that little bit of ruffling at her shoulders. So everything just has a touch of femininity. I think it's so simple, so elegant, and she looks stunning. Avoid. Sharply tailored detail. Here, that sharp contrast between Lupita's neckline, that white trim of the neckline, and the rest of that tuxedo dress is very jarring. It's too intense, and that sharpness to it just really lacks the femininity that's required for this type. Avoid overly ornate or fussy detail. So here you see just how over the top all this detailing is. In Jessica's case, she has all of that diamond-esque, or perhaps it is diamond, detailing that trim around the neckline and in her turban and there's just too much going on and the fabric is shiny. It comes off as a costume on her. It doesn't feel authentic. In Lupita's case, in the middle, that neck piece is too ornate and it just draws my attention to it in a way that is very separate from the rest of her. And again, Jessica and that dress, that beading, and of course those tussles at the bottom, especially those tussles at the bottom of her dress are too fussy. It's too much detail that really takes away from the rest of the dress and it makes it too delicate for her. Avoid animated perky detail. So here you have all of these women in various outfits with detailing that reads as just a little bit too fun, youthful, and animated. This big green spot on Marion's dress, it's reminiscent of a cartoon for me at least, and it just feels very cartoonish. It doesn't work well with her and on this dress, it just feels very misplaced. So no harmony with it. In Jessica's case, this blue dress is otherwise beautiful on her. The fabric could be slightly softer, but it's not bad at all. But these flowers, this floral detail to the side is a little bit too, perhaps not animated, but very ornate, very delicate. And I would like to see something different. I think this dress would look better on her without that. It detracts from her. And the look next to it, the holes in that dress, too youthful, too fun looking, too animated and just not harmonizing with her. And likewise, that netty sort of detailing. I mean, this is a beautiful gown. I can see on it, it has Oscar de la Renta, so I believe 
that's who designed it. Very interesting, but on her, it just comes off as very fussy. Lupita's dress as well. That neck piece, that's a necklace, I think that is part of the dress, it seems to be, but just chokers in general, I wouldn't recommend for this type, but that one is so long and it has almost like a feathery detailing to it. It's too constricting. I don't like it, but then it's completely separate from the dress. So it's just this additional piece of a thing on a dress that already has too much going on in terms of that pattern. And it's also very structured, that fabric and that netting underneath it. So it's really rigid. It holds its shape. And I think that's cool in terms of construction. But for her, something a little bit softer would look much better. Avoid minimal, no detail looks. And here we have Lupita in a dress that I think fits her beautifully. I love how it sits on her body. It has a lot of gathers and it's very soft and it's very delicate and definitely fulfills the soft aspect of the soft classic. And she looks great. I think that the color is very good on her. It's a wonderful nude for her, but because it's that and it covers the bulk of her body, it makes the entire look a little bit boring. And her accessories are wonderful, but because of how subtle that color is on her, the entire look reads as a little bit boring on her. If that same dress was in a different color, just giving her a little bit of life, this look would really come together and she would look great. I think in general, she's not one of those people that looks her best in nude coloring. She requires some color to give her a liveliness. And here you can see that the dress is completely fine, but that color just all of these things now come together to sort of detract from her I almost want to see her have more fun with her accessories to do something that's going to give back life and color to her look. So this is going to be on a case by case basis, I think. But for her specifically, she does need to stay away from minimal, no detail looks, especially if she's going to choose colors that already create a minimalist sort of palette. I want to discuss that further a little bit. So here again, we see her in these very minimalistic sort of detailed looks and the first look is all black with black shoes the middle one is the one we just saw which is a sort of charcoaly brown that's a nude on her and the last one is a brown dress that again reads as a nude on her in all of these looks i think she looks boring she looks fine but there's really nothing to write home about and that color on her becomes important because it's the biggest factor. All of these dresses would otherwise be better if they were in a brighter color or maybe two colors or something, because again, I do believe she has a gamine essence. So this now comes into play because this sort of coloring is too boring for a gamine type. She's not a gamine, but carrying that essence matters for her because it affects how she looks in certain colors and certain styles. Compare her to these looks where she is wearing very minimal, no detail looks, but I don't mind it. In fact, she looks wonderful. And it's simply the effect of the color of that minimal, no detail look. She's one of those people that really comes alive in colors, bright colors specifically. And you can just see that comparing these images to the right to the images to the left, it's night and day. So this is going to be something that somebody has to evaluate for themselves, especially with the use of color. But minimal no detail looks are not necessarily the problem then. It's what the color does because these looks to the right are very simple yet they look completely fine on her. She pulls them off with ease, but the ones to the left really drain her. So I would take this recommendation with an asterisk. Separates. Use separates carefully and sparingly. They are effective only if they are part of a well-matched ensemble approach to keep your head-to-toe appearance. Keep the colors, textures, and fabrics elegantly blended and avoid a staccato look. So the key to the classic style archetype is really 
being that put together head to toe ensemble. They are that idea of your bag matches, your shoes matches, your jacket. That really works well for them, that whole head to toe dressing. So you want to avoid mixing and matching things. And when you do, you want to be mindful about it so that the colors do repeat, the patterns do repeat, or they really blend into each other in such a way that feels thoughtful and intentional. And here you can see this in all of these looks. Kirsten danced in a very casual look, but her bag and her jacket are both black leather. And there's that black of the undershirt under the white, as well as the colorway of all of this. All of these are basic colors. She's not doing anything wild. It's navy blue denim, a white shirt, and black, and the black of her sunglasses. So there's that repetition. So this just looks very cool, very casual, but still polished. Likewise for Lupita, in the first look, she has that maroony color, I believe, but it's repeated in the pattern of the skirt. So there is a break between the top and the bottom, but there's also that sense of continuity and that looks wonderful on her. And again, in that third look, this just looks well put together. The black of the shoes and the different shades of blue of the rest of the outfit just creates that sort of, she thought about it, it's all well put together. There's a little bit of an accent in the lighter blue, but they all go together. And for Jessica, that jacket is in itself a great staple for the classic type but it has the black repeated of the pants and the shoes and the red acts as a pop of color but subdued by the pattern of that jacket which provides a space to incorporate all the colors of the rest of the outfit so that pattern has the white of the shirt and the black of the pants and it all just looks very beautifully put together and well thought out color. Your use of color should be soft and luscious within your complementary palette. Color combinations should be softly monochromatic with intensities blending together rather than sharply contrasting. Note that this doesn't mean all one color, but rather that tones should softly harmonize. You can do light and bright color combinations. If you're wearing dark colors, some softening and brightening is needed. So think of accent colors that can liven and brighten the look and also act to tie it all together. Here we have Lupita in a couple of looks. In the first one, she's chosen a color family, right? That maroon and that pink of her jacket, skirt, shoes and bag all work together. And then the black is also repeated, I believe, in her bag. But those all go together. And then that yellowy color of her top acts as a beautiful accent to break it up, but it's still very much fits and harmonizes with that color family. So when I look at her, I perceive her as one thing or head to toe. And it's just so, so beautiful the way that she's worked those colors in. Nothing is too sharply contrasted. Nothing stands out. It's just, oh, that's interesting. That's beautiful. And she has that visual interest, but not at all jarring. In the middle, she has the white dress and that coat above it. And that coat does the work again of just bringing everything together. So it has the white of the dress, so there's that repetition, but it also has the black of her bag and her shoes and the buttons do the same thing. And it all just, it's so stunning. And there's also that construction and quality of fabric that the jacket brings. So this just works wonderfully for a classic type. And in that last look is her, again, working with some very vivid colors, which she handles so beautifully. But what I'm focusing on is that repetition of the colors. So she has the red and the pink purple all going from head to toe. The jacket is red, but there's red in the dress underneath as well as the shoe. And then there's a pink that goes with the pink of the dress and that purple. And I see some red again in her earrings and maybe some purple in her sunglasses. And the white trim at the cuff of the sleeves of her dress is repeated in her handbag. So again, all of this continuous repetition, creating a look that feels very well put together very well thought of and it's beautiful on her and this palette of course falls in line with what suits her so this color 
combination may not work for everybody because not everybody can handle that intensity of red. But whatever color you're working with or whatever colors work for you, this kind of repetition would be a wonderful thing to recreate. Avoid. Multicolored splashes. So here we have Jessica Chastain, and in both of these looks, she looks just lost in them. These colors are very overwhelming on her. And the first one, for me, actually feels a little bit better off because there is at least a solidness to each of the colors. There's too much color going on, but I like that I know where the red is, I know where the blue is, I know where the yellow is, etc. And that sort of conciseness creates a neatness that really works for this type. So the look doesn't work at all, but if you're going to do it, I would rather it be done that way. Comparing that to the look to the right of it, where there's that very watercolor sort of blended effect of the colors, I think that looks worse off somehow. It lacks that structure in the color. I'm not sure this matters because both of the looks don't work, but it was interesting for me to look at. So there's just too much going on. And this reads, especially the first one, very staccato, very much gamine leaning in the smallness and the funness and that bright trim, bright colors, much too playful for a classic type and much too playful, too youthful for Jessica. It comes off as childish. And the second look doesn't flatter her at all. I don't like how it fits. I don't like how it's made, but the colors are the main issue and it doesn't work. Avoid head to toe dark color schemes. So here we're gonna use Lupita again because after discussing her requirement for brighter colors, I would definitely say that this just doesn't work on her. This might be slightly different for somebody who can carry off this color tone, but even then something lighter to brighten the look, I think would always suit this type more. But in Lupita's case, both of these looks just really pull her down. They look dull on her. They look like they need to be uplifted. I want to add something. I want to take something off. I want to do something. So avoid head to toe dark color schemes. Avoid sharply contrasting color schemes. So in Jessica's case, this is quite clear that blue and red is a bit jarring. It just cuts her off at the waist. And I want to see something slightly more harmonious on her. I actually love a lot of how the dress fits on her. I just wish it was all one seamless thing one color that really suits her maybe less sharpness on the shoulders but otherwise it really the bodice of the dress sits so beautifully on her and the skirt but the fact that it's these two separate things it feels like they belong to two separate people there's just a lack of harmony with her in lupita's case i think it's very interesting because again that gamine essence that she has, I believe, comes into play because I cannot actually say I dislike this look. I think it looks good on her. But this is a kind of look that would typically look bad on a soft classic type. I think if Jessica was to wear this exact look, it would do what Kibi is trying to warn against, that you should stay away from it. So I'm going to add it here and then we're going to talk about it a little bit more. Now, as promised, let's look at Lupita Nyong'o in sharply contrasted color schemes. And I think she looks really beautiful in all of these. These are looks that you would typically not assign to a soft classic person because that sharpness does juxtapose against them. We want them always to be harmonious in their coloring. Their colors need to harmonize nicely and really give off a sort of well thought of, well put together, and complementary in terms of palette, nothing too sharply contrasted. And these ones do the opposite of that. But Lupita looks great in them because, again, I think that Gamin essence is coming to the forefront. So in this first one, there's just so much color here and depth of color and vividity of color that 
would be overwhelming on somebody who didn't have that sort of essence and any typical soft classic with a classic essence. But for her, she looks great. I love that jacket. I think it's a wonderful addition. A soft classic without a gamine essence would look good in that outfit, just in terms of color, if you removed the hot pink jacket. And for Lupita, it would suddenly become very boring if you took it out. That jacket is what creates this photo. That balance of colors, that pop of color is what really brings it to life. And to the right of that, that blue and white dress, I'm not arguing is her best, but it's not the color that makes it not work. She is very easily able to handle that sort of sharply contrasted blue and white. Likewise, that yellow and electric blue dress, she looks great in that. And that does have a little bit of that ensemble effect, right? The blue of her head wrap and her purse matches the blue of the bodice and the pattern that goes down to around her hip area but it's sharply contrasted against that yellow. All of it is very bright and vivid and she is handling it very well. And again, that black and white of the dress next to it, something that works for her. And likewise, that first image we talked about in the last section, that yellow and blue, that is working for her. She doesn't look bad in it at all. Try, if you can, to imagine somebody like Jessica Chastain in any of these colors, or even Marianne Cordiard. Both of them, I think, would be quite overwhelmed by this intensity of colors and this very sharply contrasted and broken up sort of coloring. But Lupita can pull it off. So I think she is an interesting case and it helps us to take in Kibi, but to realize that there's other aspects to it that you need to be mindful of. It's not just your type, but you're going to have to mesh your type with your color season and with your additional essences to really create a wardrobe that is perfectly harmonious with you. In any case, with that said, I just wanted to highlight that Lupita is very much able to handle sharply contrasting color schemes in a way that most soft naturals would not because of her gamine but she is still a soft classic. So while she can handle these colors, they are not her best. I wouldn't recommend that she goes out and dresses like this all the time. I'm just saying that they don't overwhelm her so she can play into it. So here we find her where I think she is at her best. What I see is her mixing the gamine essence. So there is a staccato effect to how she's using the colors. There's a lot of color blocking in some cases. There's a lot of breaking up of the colors very quick and fast, if that makes sense. And there's a vividity to the colors, but there's also her balancing that with the classic in her. And there is a subtlety in how those colors are coming together in the first image and a head to toe sort of ensemble. So a repetition of colors in the middle one, the green of her pants and her bag are matching, but that green is also repeated in her top as well as the blue of her top is repeated in her shoes. So there's that coming together of creating an ensemble look. And I think this is her at her best. She's perfectly balancing both of these two things. Compare that to these looks to the left where I think she leans a little too much in the gamine without the subtlety, polish, elegance, and maturity of the classic. And you suddenly see that she gets lost. So there's just too much color going on. It's too youthful. It's too fun for lack of a better word. And it's just not sophisticated enough. And I don't even in some cases recognize really that that's Lupita Nyong'o. It's fun to play with. So she has to really find that line where she is going into a bit of the gamine because without it, then if she's purely classic, she quickly has her looks become boring. But if she goes too much into the gamine, then she quickly has her looks become childish and lacking in elegance, which she definitely requires. So this was a little caveat, but it was fun. And hopefully you get the point that I'm making. Prince. 
Prints should be soft, flowing, and watercolor. Abstract, rounded shapes that swirl into each other are excellent. So here you can see that in Lupita's beautiful pattern, very abstract in how those lines are going. I like the deeper blue, the lighter blue, and then that pop of orange. This just works and looks great on her. The swirls in Jessica's dress in the middle, also a little bit abstract, and I think it's a very interesting pattern. The dress itself is okay, but the pattern works. And likewise, in Kirsten Dunn's case, there's that watercolor effect. I'm not sure what color it is. Things flow into each other, and there's a subtlety to it that really works on her, especially that softness of the colors, because she has a much softer color composition. So her palettes need to be softer to harmonize with her. Avoid. Sharp geometrics. So here there's just too many sharp lines going on. It doesn't work for the additional softness that these women have. In Jessica's case, it's not only the pattern of the outfit she has on, but also the fabric of the pattern. It's all just coming off as too strict and too mathematical. Those squares, just very rigid and really not working out. In Lupita's case, also a couple of things not working. That fabric has that glitzy, too shiny thing going on that doesn't work. The skirt flares out, so her shaping is a bit lost. But that pattern, it just is too geometric and there's not enough softness and flow to it. Likewise, Meryl's straight up and down stripes, black and white, very sharply contrasted. It it comes off as a little bit jarring on her. The colorway, the black and white, is a classic combo, but the way that it is done is not very elegant. If she was wearing black pants and a white shirt and, you know, a very classic sort of look, the same colorway would work, but in this pattern, it's too broken up, so it reads as too childish. Avoid small symmetrical prints. So here the key component is the smallness of these prints. And in Jessica's case, there's also that geometry going on, but the print itself just pulls you into the dress and it becomes separated from her. Something slightly bigger and more flowy would suit her better. In Lupita's case, there's the smallness of the detail, but also the cuteness and the ornateness of that detailing. It's a little bit too cute for her. So while I think she does have a gamine essence, I don't necessarily think that she has an ingenue essence. And this leans very ingenue. So it's too youthful on her, too childish almost. It's cute, but it's not necessarily her best. Those butterflies and even the pineapple that she's holding, all of these details and that ribbon that comes down in the middle of the dress, a little bit too, too little girl for her. Avoid animated cute prints. So here again, there's all of that animation and cuteness. You see that in the first look that Lupita has in the white dress. It looks like a cartoon sort of drawing along that dress that just doesn't work for her. Jessica's case and Lupita's last look have that animated quality that's unsophisticated on both of them. Lupita's one has a bit of a gamine-esque essence to it, but too gamine. So remember that she has to balance this out and this just falls way too much in that arena without giving her enough of the classic that she requires for her perfect blend and on Jessica this is just too too animated there's too much going on within the pattern itself and it is separate from her so I look at the dress and then I look at her but I can't take her and the dress all in as one thing so there's a lack of harmony there and now let's look at the sample soft classic wardrobe that I've put together before we do, please note that Kibi has repeatedly said that clothing doesn't belong to a specific type. 
and rather that it's how you put a piece into an entire outfit that makes it either appropriate or inappropriate for that type. Keep that in mind as we move along. For lingerie, I kept to what I consider simple, traditional, and classic pieces, but with that added femininity or added softness. In this middle two-piece, you see that lace trim, both in the bodice and in the shorts, and I think that touch of softness just really elevates this and marries it well to the soft aspect of this classic type. Likewise, the frills, gentle frills on that white two-piece, it's that little touch that adds that additional femininity depending on how much you like that or don't like that, but I just think it works for this type. And lastly, that very simple negligee with that little bit of lace in the bodice, but otherwise a very simple and elegant piece. For swimsuits, I stuck to a very traditional palette in the black and white or all black and this of course can be done in any colorway that suits you best so the middle one is just very simple classic clean lines and the work of the femininity for me comes out in how the piece itself does the shaping so i think this would suit just about anybody really but would look especially nice on a soft classic in the color that suits you best and the other two have that black and white colorway and that first one I like because the two piece has that tie string and for some reason those loops it's just a very delicate touch of additional femininity but so elegant still so polished and I think a one piece is always polished and sophisticated because it does that additional covering up which gives it a sense of elegance and class that really marries itself to this type. For shorts, these are very clean lines and very traditional sort of silhouettes, but the fabrics give that softness, especially this one to the right. There's that little bit of flow within that fabric, a little bit of movement. The middle one has a lot more structure to it, but that shaping is very rounded. So with a very soft billowy top, that could be a beautiful outfit. And that first pair just very high quality fabric, very clean lines, and I think this would suit just about any classic type. I like also that they all sit at the waist, which gives that extra shaping for that additional femininity. For casual tops, I kept in mind that this type really requires that sense of refinement and polish. So even when they are being casual, they still require that additional elegance so a white top is something that everybody needs so for the soft classic a rounded neckline and a soft fabric as seen in this second look with the white belt so clean and classic but to the left of it is an alternative a slightly more plush higher quality fabric and then there's that additional detailing in the neckline that just kind of gives it that sense of oomph. It's still a plain white t-shirt, but the change in fabric just adds a touch of luxury to it that makes it feel more polished for this type. And then to the right, there is that symmetry of that top with the collar. So a casual top, but just a touch of a collar gives it that sense of formality that adds sophistication and this would be a wonderful addition for this type. And then that last look has the sleeveless white shirt with the tie at the neckline. That tie gives that bit of draping, that little bit of flow. So when you're moving, there's something that moves with you and that just adds that touch of femininity. Blouses should be soft and elegant with soft edges or a suggestion of intricate detail, soft bows, slight lacy edges, etc. Fabric should be lightweight with slight sheen. Very soft and sheer linens are also elegant. So here you see that soft fabric, that sheen, slight draping in the neckline. And in that shirt, that gentle billowing of the sleeves coming in to a tailored cuff. So there's that polish, that elegance, but also that softness and femininity. You want to avoid sharply tailored styles 
wide unconstructed styles, animated perky styles. Sweaters should be soft and smooth. Lightweight knits are best, particularly when the finish is luxuriously soft to the touch. Cashmere, angora, silky weaves are all excellent. Subdued, intricate detail is good. So here again, this type is all about elegance and high quality polish. So the most expensive quality that you can afford is the sort of tagline for the classic type. If you have knits, you want to make sure that they look and feel as new. There's nothing worse than pilling or any kind of tugs and pulls for this type. Everything has to just be so polished and put together. Here, I love that soft collared neckline of that first piece, but I also like the detailing of that pink sweater because this type has the ability to pull a little bit from romantic sort of detailing. So depending on the person, those buttons could be too ornate or they could be just fine. But that little bit of detailing, that femininity again works great for this type. And that last one is just sleek and elegant, simple, classic. You want to avoid oversized bulky sweaters, rough or thick knits, skinny ribbed knits, and perky patterns. Pants should be of softly tailored styles in lightweight fabric. Soft pleats, slight gathers, and a slightly tapered leg are nice details. Hemline should be just below the top of the ankle, so as to show a touch of foot or shoe, which gives it that extra feminine touch. So leaning in the classic with the high quality fabrics, wonderful tailoring, and the smooth lines, but then giving it that touch of femininity with fabrics that have a little bit of movement and flow to them and are softer to the touch and of course that shortening of the hemline because ankles and wrists these are all very feminine parts of the body so when you show them it just really romanticizes a look and for this type it's a great way to lean into that without upsetting the overall classicness of their type avoid man tailored styles with sharp edges wide unconstructed or baggy styles, overly fussy pants with excess trim or detail. And for jeans, I have clean straight lines, but a heightening of the waist so that there is that shaping when you're wearing it with a nice blouse, for example, a very gentle cinching that will give that extra touch of femininity, but the denim itself, high quality, very clean, no ripped detailing or anything like that. Very sophisticated and elegant still. Jackets should be softly tailored with curvy shaping that gently shows the waist. And this detailing should be subdued, never fussy. Short to moderate lengths are best, although a longer length is possible in a belted jacket. Or one that has a very understated peplum. Slight shoulder definition is possible, but nothing crisp or sharp. And all detailing should overall be subdued, understated, never overdone. So here the key components of all these jackets are very high quality tailoring and high quality fabrics, but a roundedness in all of the edging. So nothing too sharp and in the jacket top right, there's that roundedness of the lapels of the jacket, which just gives that softening and the buttons of the jacket provide a little bit of detail, that gold that just gives it a sort of elevated look, a touch of luxury on top of that great tailoring of the jacket itself. And at the bottom, there's that gentle peplum of the shaping of that jacket, which just provides great shape. So above anything that this person would be wearing, they now have a built-in silhouette that has that femininity to it. And that last one has just very clean, simple lines, but a roundedness of the neckline and also of the shoulders and slight gathers there. Very simple, very elegant. Avoid overly tailored 
sharp edged stiff jackets. Avoid wide boxy jackets that are unconstructed, long straight jackets that hide the waist, extremely cropped jackets that are crisp and perky, and avoid overly fussy or flouncy jackets with excess trim. For coats, I went with classic silhouettes and high quality fabrics and tailoring, but also chose to pull in that very classic and traditional aspect to really highlight the key components of this type. So in the first one, you have the classic trench coat and very traditional, but I love how it has that tie at the waist that gives that soft feminine shaping. Likewise, the middle one, a much heavier fabric for perhaps a much harsher climate or colder day, but that cinching off the waist breaks that rather stiff silhouette and will create that shaping. And the last one is a softer fabric. Notice the rounded shoulder and again, that cinching off the waist, just a gentleness and a simplicity to that entire design that I think would suit any soft classic. Skirts should be smooth and gently flowing. If straight, the skirts should be lightweight and slightly tapered at the hemline. Flared skirts are best with an uneven hemline that softly flows. So the main thing with skirts is a sense of flow and a gentle shaping. And you can see that in all of the skirts here. That first one has that touch of asymmetry, but that overlapping of that green fabric creates a little bit of rouging and that just adds a touch of delicacy and femininity and the skirt to the right of that the white one with the pleats pleats have such great movement to them and a softness to them again more of that femininity likewise the skirt at the bottom all about just movement and flow and i think all of these do that so well avoid long straight skirts sharply tailored skirts wide unconstructed styles voluminous circles, extra flouncy skirts except for smoothly flared styles, extremely tight or clingy skirts, excess detail that is overdone. Dresses should be graceful, flowing and elegant. Flared shapes are best and waist definition is essential, although it may be slightly dropped in a very clingy fabric. Soft detail with a suggestion of intricacy is excellent and draping is always perfect. So in all these looks, I notice gentle shaping, beautiful silhouettes, and a softness in the fabric with that touch of elegance and flow and femininity. I love the first look, that satin-like fabric and how it clings to the waist and gives that beautiful shaping, but it also has that very softly draped neckline and everything just has that touch of femininity to it. It's absolutely elegant and so beautiful. That look in the middle has those pleats again, soft fabric, lots of movement, and just very elegant, I would say. And I love that last one because of the detailing in the middle. So it's that touch of intricacy and it brings in that additional femininity and polish but still very subdued very elegant and simple in a way that would suit a classic type for evening wear symmetrical flooring shapes slightly ornate detail lightweight draped and sheer fabric slightly sparkly fabric smooth fabric slightly ornate trim but not fussy chiffon ball gowns long gowns with flowing skirts, beaded bodices and jackets, ornate and fitted jackets over gowns, silk dresses, elegant dinner suits with fitted jackets. So these are all options that can be great for this type for events that call for that very done up sort of look, ball gowns, red carpet events, etc. And these celebrities here are doing a good job of showcasing what some of those options look like. Overall, great shaping,
detailing can be done like in Lupita's case with the beaded dress but it does have to feel subdued so the fact that the beads and the dress are the same color gives it a sense of subtlety so the dress is intricate but still subdued and elegant and simplicity in the case of Jessica Chastain in that middle dress but still that softness of the fabric and this movement when she moves simple elegant and I think they all look beautiful and now let's talk Kibi soft classic accessories. Accessories should be clean, elegant, and feminine. Shapes are round, tapered, ornate, and flowing while always remaining symmetrical. Bags should be moderate size, rounded shapes, perhaps with slight trim, clutches or moderate straps. So here I see leather and all high quality fabrics and very rounded edges so nothing too sharp but i also see a slight delicacy so that black clutch bag with those two round pearls perfect for giving it a touch of elegance and femininity also that beaded bag up top just that ornate detail but it's not too much it's still very subtle and very elegant simple pieces with a touch of additional intricacy and femininity is what this type wants to go for avoid overly large styles and avoid angular shapes shoes should be delicate and tapered narrow heels and toes slightly bare think of slint back and open toe shoes delicate feminine flats so like with the bags simple elegance with a touch of additional intricacy and femininity I like the smooth lines and the smooth materials, but also the intricate detailing, those buckles, the gold buckling in those sling packs up top, the gold of these loafers and the champagne colored sling packs also just add that additional femininity and a touch of sparkle. So depending on what your personal styling is, you can really find yourself here either all the way very simple or leaning more towards that feminine and almost romantic style but a blending of the two really is what this type is going for and I think these are all great options you want to avoid angular styles and chunky styles as well as plain pumps jewelry should be clean elegant and softly feminine this is a place for classic types to invest substantially the quality will show Jewelry adds a touch of sophistication and delicacy to your look. It doesn't need to be overdone, just simply suggesting a touch of glamour and a hint of intricacy. This will be effective. So remember that the highest quality you can afford is a tagline for this type and less is more. So you really don't need to have a lot of jewelry, but where you do have a piece that is beautiful sophisticated and just gives it that touch of class and elegance that would work to pull your look together and give it an additional touch of sophistication and will look amazing all of these pieces have in them bold clear shapes think of the round neck piece the round earrings as well as the rectangular watch face but also the materials themselves leather high quality and precious stones diamonds pearls all of these are classic and just give that touch of luxury and this is going to be important for this type hats should be small and elegant with rounded shapes and clean crisp brims picture frame or garden party styles with soft detailing like silk flowers for example are also good for this type so shaping with a little bit of delicacy as all of these styles indicate rounded shapes and potentially some ribbon to soften it up you want to avoid severe man tailored hats large unconstructed hats and small perky caps belts should be narrow to moderate width elegant slightly ornate buckles exquisite leather skin or fabric for the materials so here the buckles really steal the show because that's where you get to emphasize the femininity the intricacy and that touch of ornateness and detailing 
And again, this is a place where it's going to lean more on everybody's personal style. They can be very simple and classic in shape and styling or be more towards the intricate and delicate side. But as long as it's not overly fussy or overdone and the fabrics and the materials used are high quality, you should be fine. Avoid wide stiff styles and overly ornate styles. Also avoid waist cinchers. If you enjoyed the sample wardrobe that I created for this type, I would love to give it to you as a free download. And keep in mind that it's not just the clothes that come in the document. It's all the wardrobe items, of course, as well as the accessories, but also a breakdown of the body type and hair and makeup. I think it's a very useful tool to have if soft classic is your type to have all of that information in one place and to really help guide you along as you start to build your wardrobe. If you are interested in having that, please check out the link to the free download in the description box and I hope it is very helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like the content that I'm creating or if you want to discuss anything I touched on in the video, please do so. Leave me a comment. Also, like the video and of course, subscribe and turn on those notifications. I'll see you on the next one.